The proximal femoral nail anti-rotation, known as the PFNA, is an intramedullary implant for the treatment of unstable trochanteric femoral fractures. This presentation shows the main steps of intramedullary nailing with the PFNA. There are four sizes of PFNA available, a long version, a standard version, a small version, and a very small one. Here, the small PFNA will be used. The PFNA is a cannulated nail. Within its upper third, a lateral bend of six degrees makes it easy to introduce the nail into the femur. The PFNA blade is inserted into the femoral head through a hole in the proximal section of the nail. Due to the helical shape of the blade, the cancellous bone in the femoral head is compacted, which provides better purchase, especially in osteoporotic bone. Distal locking, either static or dynamic, can be achieved using the distal hole in the nail. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications, pre-operative planning, the opening of the femoral shaft, the insertion of the nail and blade, distal locking, and implant removal. The PFNA is indicated for unstable trochanteric fractures type 3-1-A2 or 3-1-A3, according to the AO classification. Treatment of these fractures with an intramedullary implant enables immediate and full weight-bearing postoperatively. Since the PFNA is available with different CCD angles, the appropriate angle has to be determined preoperatively. An AP radiograph is taken of the uninjured leg. Using the goniometer or the preoperative planning template, the CCD angle of the uninjured leg is determined with the radiograph as a guide. The PFNA with a 130 degree CCD angle is appropriate in most cases and will be used in this exercise. The appropriate distal PFNA diameter is found by placing the radiographic ruler over an AP radiograph of the isthmus of the ipsilateral femur shaft. If the medullary canal is too narrow, a smaller diameter PFNA is selected, or the canal is reamed to a diameter at least one millimeter larger than the diameter of the planned PFNA. Although surgery can be performed on a standard table, a fracture table is normally used. The body of the patient is slightly adducted to the contralateral side for easy access to the trochanter tip. One image intensifier C-arm is needed. It should be positioned to provide good AP and lateral views of both the proximal femoral area and the femoral head. Closed reduction must be checked with image intensification in both views. To distract the fragments, the leg is pulled along its longitudinal axis. After the length has been restored, the leg is internally rotated to regain its normal anatomy, as verified in the AP and lateral views. The incision should be about 5 centimeters long, it starts 2 to 6 centimeters proximal to the tip of the greater trochanter, in line with the longitudinal axis of the femoral shaft in the lateral view. The fascia is opened with scissors, and the gluteus muscles are split in the direction of their fibers. The ideal entry point lies on or slightly lateral to the tip of the greater trochanter, due to the six-degree bend of the nail. In the lateral view, this point should be in line with the central axis of the femoral neck. The entry hole for the PFNA should be created manually, so the following instruments are used. The universal chuck with T-handle, 
the 3.2 millimeter guide wire, the 17.0 3.2 millimeter drill sleeve, the 20.0 17.0 millimeter protection sleeve, and the 17 millimeter cannulated drill bit with stop, which will prevent overdrilling. The 3.2 millimeter guide wire mounted in the universal chuck with T handle is inserted into the tip of the greater trochanter or slightly lateral to it at an angle of six degrees to the longitudinal axis of the femoral shaft in the AP view. The guide wire is inserted into the medullary cavity to a depth of at least 15 centimeters. In the lateral view, the position of the guide wire has to be straight and in the center of the medullary cavity. Any other position would place the PFNA either too ventrally or too dorsally, which would hamper the smooth introduction of the nail and impede the blade from being correctly positioned in the femoral neck. In younger patients with strong bone, it might be necessary to use the compact air drive. First, the protection sleeve and drill sleeve are slid over the guide wire. Then the drill sleeve is removed. The cannulated 17 millimeter drill bit is guided through the protection sleeve over the guide wire. The bone is gently drilled as far as the stop on the drill bit, either manually, using the universal chuck with T-handle, or with a power tool. To prevent the displacement of the fracture fragments, lateral movements or excessive compression forces should be avoided. The protection sleeve and the guide wire are removed. First, the nail is mounted onto the insertion handle. To do this, the connecting screw is guided through the insertion handle and the nail is secured using the hexagonal wrench with T-handle. The connection between the nail and the insertion handle must be tight to avoid deviations when inserting the PFNA blade through the insertion handle. The nail is carefully introduced manually into the femoral opening, either with or without the guide wire. Gentle manipulation helps to insert the nail. The image intensifier is used to check the insertion of the PFNA. If necessary, light blows with the hammer on the protection shield of the insertion handle may be used. To help determine the correct nail position, a K-wire has been placed anteriorly outside the femoral neck to indicate the position of the guide wire for the helical blade. The correct position of the nail is reached as soon as the K-wire projects into the center of the hole for the helical blade in the upper part of the nail. The aiming arm is attached to the insertion handle. Color codes on the aiming arm correspond to the appropriate insertion instruments. Here the yellow color-coded instruments are used. They are the buttress nut, the 16.0-11.0 millimeter protection sleeve, the 11.0-3.2 millimeter drill sleeve, and the 3.2 millimeter trocar. The buttress nut is threaded onto the protection sleeve. The lateral side marking must face the head of the sleeve. The buttress nut is inserted as far as the black marking. The drill sleeve and the trocar are inserted through the protection sleeve. The entire sleeve assembly is advanced through the hole in the aiming arm marked 130 degrees until it clicks into the aiming arm. Otherwise, there's no guarantee of the exact position of the PFNA blade. The protection sleeve is advanced to the lateral cortex by turning the buttress nut clockwise. The buttress nut should not be tightened too firmly. Otherwise, the precision of the insertion handle and sleeve assembly would be impaired. The drill sleeve is turned to allow the protection sleeve to pass through. During the entire PFNA blade implantation, the sleeve assembly must be in contact with the bone. This contact should be checked under image intensification 
to ensure that the sleeve is touching the lateral cortex. The trocar is removed. A new 3.2 mm guide wire is introduced through the drill sleeve into the bone. Both the direction and position of the guide wire are verified with the image intensifier in the AP and lateral views. In the AP view, the guide wire should be seen in the lower half of the femoral neck. In the lateral view, the wire should be in the center of the femoral neck. The guide wire is inserted subchondrally into the femoral head to a point at least 5 millimeters from the joint. The length for the guide wire is measured using the measuring device. The tip of the blade should be in the subchondral bone 10 to 15 millimeters from the joint. Therefore, approximately 10 millimeters are subtracted from the measured length to give the length needed for the blade. The instruments used for the insertion of the PFNA blade are the fixation sleeve, the 11 millimeter cannulated drill bit, and the 11 millimeter cannulated reamer. The drill sleeve is carefully removed without changing the position of the guide wire. The lateral cortex always has to be opened separately using the 11 millimeter cannulated drill bit. The drill bit is pushed over the guide wire. Drilling is continued to the stop. Then the drill is carefully removed. The chosen length of the blade is set on the 11 millimeter cannulated reamer. The cannulated reamer is now slid over the guide wire and reaming is begun. The fixation sleeve prevents reaming any farther. In elderly patients, it may not be necessary to use the cannulated reamer to prepare the blade insertion because of inferior bone quality. The hexagonal tip of the inserter is introduced into the appropriate slot. The PFNA blade is supplied locked. To unlock the blade and fix the inserter to the blade, the inserter is turned anti-clockwise until it stops. The inserter must not be tightened too firmly. Now the blade rotates freely. This rotation is essential for the insertion of the PFNA blade. The blade connected to the inserter is slid over the guide wire and through the protection sleeve. Because of the shape of the PFNA blade, it must be aligned with the protection sleeve for insertion. At the same time, the button on the protection sleeve must be pressed. The blade is manually introduced into the femoral head as far as possible. Using light hammer blows, it's further inserted to the stop. The inserter has to click into the protection sleeve. Unnecessary force must not be used when introducing the PFNA blade. The position of the blade is checked under image intensification in both planes. The PFNA blade is now locked by turning the inserter clockwise to the stop. Locking is verified intraoperatively under image intensification. If the gap is closed, the PFNA blade is locked. The button on the protection sleeve is pressed to remove the inserter. The guide wire is removed and disposed of. The protection sleeve and the buttress nut are released and removed by pressing the button on the clamp device of the aiming arm. Dynamic or static distal locking options are available. Here static distal locking is demonstrated. The instruments needed are the 11.0-8.0 mm protection sleeve, the 8.0-4.0 mm drill sleeve, and the 4.0 mm trocar, all of which have a green color coating. Also needed are the 4.0 mm drill bit, Static distal locking starts with a stab incision and the insertion of the drill sleeve assembly through the static locking hole on the aiming arm down to the bone. The trocar is removed.
and the 4.0 mm drill bit is used to drill through both cortices. The length of the required locking bolt is read directly off the marking on the drill bit. The drill sleeve is removed. As an alternative, the length of the bolt can be determined with the depth gauge for locking bolts. Two to four millimeters are added to the measured length to ensure that the locking bolt is firmly engaged in the opposite cortex. The locking bolt is inserted through the protection sleeve using the large hexagonal screwdriver. The protection sleeve and the aiming arm are removed. The hexagonal wrench is used to loosen the connecting screw and the insertion handle is removed. The use of an end cap is optional. The final position of the implant is checked in both planes. To remove the blade, the locking bolt and the nail, the following instruments are needed. The extraction screw for the PFNA blade, the slotted hammer, the guide rod for the PFNA, the pin wrench, and the large hexagonal screwdriver. After an incision through the existing scars, the PFNA blade is located either by palpation or with image intensification. The extraction screw is inserted, and gentle pressure is applied to turn it anti-clockwise into the PFNA blade to release the locking mechanism. Light hammer blows with the slotted hammer help to remove the PFNA blade. If the PFNA end cap has been used, it's now removed. To prevent the PFNA from rotating in the bone, the locking bolt is removed only after the guide rod is attached to the PFNA and tightened with the pin wrench. The distal locking bolt is removed using the large hexagonal screwdriver. The holding sleeve may also be used to help with the removal. The slotted hammer is attached to the guide rod. The PFNA is extracted using gentle hammer blows. This presentation has demonstrated the main steps for intramedullary nailing with the PFNA. The clinical indications, pre-operative planning, the opening of the femoral shaft, the insertion of the nail and blade, distal locking, and implant removal.